All right, I'm Digital Native. I'm back with the third part in the series of videos that I've been doing based on using FX sends and also using Sidechain to affect your sends and affect your reverbs and things like that. First couple of videos, I looked at a piano, then I looked at drums and how you can use these techniques on there. Final one I'm gonna do is looking at how you might do that on a vocal. So I've just got a vocal sample here that I found. I've done nothing specific to the sound as such on its own. It's pretty much as is. Ignore these sends at the moment because we'll come to those in a minute. Let's just have a listen to that dry. Time. Oh, time is an illusion. Nice little vocal, probably a little bit of EQ work and different things and a bit of compression to do on there um, to make it sound sweet. But we're just going to focus on effect sends at the minute today. And or adding reverb or adding effects to your tracks. So I've just got the uh, Valhalla Supermassive up on there. This is a free one. If you haven't got this, then go and find it because it's a real nice plugin. I'm just going to turn that on, have a listen to what it sounds like. It sounds nice, it puts it in a real nice space. Uh, it's making the vocal sound really big. But again, the problem that we've got is that we've now drenched our uh, vocal in that, and that's kind of been baked over the top of it. So it means that anything we do subsequently, if we're trying to affect that, or if the reverb has added anything, particularly because it's so big, it's got a huge tail on it, it's gonna have lots of things going on, and it's gonna be pushing up lots of different frequency areas and creating a lot of sort of mud and cloud in the mix. So if we go in and try and EQ it, um, with anything, then we're going to be detracting from the original sound. And like I sort of mentioned in the last video, what you're trying to do is make a decent sound. You're trying to make a good solid element to your track that stands up kind of on its own. And then these things are just really helping it to sit in the mix or enhance it a little bit. So if you're then having to remove stuff because of enhancements that you've made, you're kind of going backwards. That doesn't make any sense. So what I've done is I've loaded up exactly the same reverb onto an effect send and I've sent it there. So if I go to that effects send channel, I've now got my same Valhalla reverb on there. Only difference is that I've turned mix up to 100%. And then what I'm doing is I'm controlling the wet dry using this fader here. So uh, if I go back to my vocal track, what I did was, as I did in the other ones, I've got this pretty drastic EQ. This is not actually doing anything to uh, the source sound of the vocal. What I've done is just picked out some of the uh, sort of main um, fundamental frequencies or resonant sort of frequencies within that vocal that are either likely to be you know giving that vocal its main sound um, or potentially things that are going to cause something that's going to poke out in that reverb and add something that we don't really want so let's have a listen with that uh, nasty eq applied time oh time is an illusion time so you can see it's pulled out a lot of these sort of resonant points and these are the things i find that when you put a reverb on are they going to start poking through and making that cloud but obviously you wouldn't apply that to an original sound you wouldn't leave that it sounds nasty even if you were trying to enhance some of the things in your sound um, you may be boosting in certain areas like that but you probably wouldn't be as drastic but what i've done is I'll just bypass that. All I did was copy that over to the reverb channel. And if I open that up, that is the opposite of that. So again, what I've done is I've used the invert function. If you haven't got that on your EQ, you just um, you can just copy the settings over and then just pull it down instead of it being up. So where it was a boost, I've cut it. So what that's gonna do is cut out those frequencies from the reverb signal. So if they're the main frequencies, the fundamental frequencies, um, or harmonics or whatever it is within the original sound you've got, um, by taking them out of the reverb channel, what that means is that you're not gonna be getting that in the reverb. The reverb is adding something extra um, that's gonna be sitting around your sound, but it's not just um, piling up on top of your original sound and clouding it up. So let's have a listen. So that's with the EQ applied. If I take that off, time. Oh, time 
So you can hear when the EQ's not on, you're getting a lot more in those areas, obviously. Um, what I'll do is I'll show you uh, with the listen enabled. So when we're going to actually hear what's, what the EQ is doing and what the reverb sounds like on its own. So that's with it off. So you can see with it off, we're getting, obviously we're getting all this. I've done a high cut, uh, sorry, a low cut as well. Um, and then I've pulled those frequencies out, but with that, we're getting a lot of uh, mud in there. And with it on. Again, with this, it's all down to you sort of working with it and finding what works. It's not just a case of definitely doing it this way. It's just um, using this technique and maybe tweaking it to fit the sound that you've got. These are not hard and fast rules by any means for EQ. It's based on the sound source that you've got at the end of the day. Uh, and I'm not suggesting this is the only way to do it. Um, something that you, that you can do as well, which I didn't mention in the other videos with um, reverbs many of them will give you uh, an option to do a bit of uh, low or high cut on them but you can also do that with your eq as well so reverbs might add a lot of that top end which what gives it the sparkle but maybe that's too much um so you know what you can do is do a bit of a roll off at the top as well so you can roll off at the top just to sort of rein that back in a little bit um so it's not uh clad and other things you know things like drums for example they need that high-end space and they need that, that sort of um, uh, space for them to breathe. If you've got lots of reverbs, have got loads of top end on them, that's going to cloud that up. That's affecting other things in your mix. So that's really what we're trying to do is clean up um, the things that don't need to be there. So what we've been able to do is add a reverb that is just as big. And if not, you know, we could even turn this up a little bit more because we've taken out so much of the sort of mud out of there. We can probably turn it up a little more. And so it gets us that big vocal without it uh, affecting the original. And if I just go back to the original very briefly, so I'm just going to mute that, go back to the original one, and we'll do a bit of an AB. So very heavy on the reverb there, affecting, affecting the original sound. Turn that off. That's on the send. And straight away, it just it just sounds nicer. It sounds cleaner. The reverb is just as big. Um, it just hasn't got all that extra cloudiness in it. It just sounds so much sweeter to me anyway. Um, but what you can also do, again, and I've shown this for the piano and the drums as well, is that you could be adding a compressor after it, um, which um, in this case, what I've done is I've fed it again with the dry signal from what I'm working on. In this case, I'm working with the vocal, so I've fed the dry vocal signal into that. So that's just on there. So that's going to be going into this compressor, and then every time the vocal is sung, um, that's going to dip the volume of it. And this is something that's a really good tool for getting like a huge reverb tail afterwards without totally drowning your vocal when it plays. So what you can hear is that um, reverb is rushing in afterwards and that's partly because I've got this auto makeup gain switched on. So it's pulling down the sound, but because of how much compression is being applied to it, it's pushing that level up um, afterwards, which is making it rush in. And that can just make your vocal sound huge, even though when it's actually singing and the words are being spoken, it's not drenched in that reverb. So you're retaining the clarity. You can still hear what the vocalist or the singer is saying, but you're getting this huge reverb on the end. And obviously you can go more drastic. And obviously the more you do it, the more you have to tweak your release settings for when it comes back in. Just to show you the technique and how it works, 
this is just uh, you know a good sort of demonstration of that. And if I put it on to listen, just so that you can hear what's going on there and how that's being affected. So we can hear it's quite, it sounds quite drastic, but in the context, it's not as much. And again, you'll, you'll tweak those things to suit. Um, I showed in the last video, I was looking at um, uh, piano in the other video that I did. Um, you can also add a, a dynamic EQ as well. So again, if you're looking to get things nice and crisp down the middle, so you know if you've got a portion of your vocal that's or a lot of it is coming down the middle, um, you could get yourself something like um, I use the F6, um, but you might be using something else. Is set up an EQ and again set up your sidechain send. I'm going to pick the vocal and turn that on. If I select a frequency band somewhere in the mid, because that's where a lot of the vocal is going to be, set that to external. And then when it's playing, I can see that's coming in here. Just find that uh, sweet spot. And what I can do is maybe just affect the middle. Or wherever it is that you want to be uh, pulling it out. So I'll turn the attack down a bit. It drastic so you can hear it's pulling out a lot of that information but because of how I set it up it's only doing it in the mids so you're not losing anything from the side you're still going to get that lush big reverb on the sides but it's cleaning up the mid where your vocals probably predominantly sit in or some of it anyway um, and so it's just helping to carve space out in the middle for vocals and drums and anything else that's there um, while still maintaining a big reverb and keeping a, a nice amount of width on the things that you're doing. Um, so again, that, that's about it for that one. So um, if you've not seen the other two I've done, I did one on piano, I did one on drums, very similar techniques, but just showing how you can use them in different ways, um, depending on the element in the mix that you're working on. If you've liked these videos and you enjoy them, you found them useful, uh, do uh, give me a subscribe, give me a like, uh, drop me a comment below if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching.